Section 2.6, introduction to functions. So given a relation in x and y, we say y is a function of x if for each element x in the domain, there is exactly one value of y in the range. This means that the x values are not repeated. Basically, that's what it sums up to be. So example one says determine if the relations are functions. So remember, your x values cannot be repeated. So here, the x's, was remember, your input values are your x's, your outputs are your y's. The x of the 1 was repeated twice. It went to a 3 and a 4, so it's not a function. When you go to b, the 1 went to the 6, the 3 went to the 4, the 5 went to the 2. No x's were repeated, so it's a function. It's a function because no x values repeated. On c, the negative 1 to negative 9, the 3 to negative 9, the 4 to negative 9. It is also a function. Let's remember the rule. No x values repeated. So back in previous classes, like Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, we talked about vertical line test. The vertical line test it is a function, states that if it is a function, there is no vertical line that intersects a graph in more than one point. So a rule that you, or a trick you can use is you can place your pencil vertically on a given function graphed and roll left to right to check. So you can use your, use your pencil, you can use your fing, index finger, what not to check. So example two says use a vertical line test to determine if it is a function. So I'm putting my pencil and I'm rolling it left to right, my pen left to right, and notice that it hits, if I roll it left to right, I hit here and here, they are intersecting which means it's not a function. When you look at B, we have a problem. And when I roll it left to right, it hits at one place each time, which means there's only one X value, so it is a function. On C, your S graph, well, the minute I rolled over the middle section here, it hit more than once. Here it hit once, twice, three times in the same position for the x, so it's not a function. Means that these three points have the same x coordinate of zero. Zero comma negative five, zero comma one, zero comma seven. So they all have the same x value. On D, we have a y equals mx plus b graph. So obviously if we roll left to right, you should only hit once at a time. One value of x, one value of x, one value of x. So it is a function. Function notation is often used to define an equation, usually f of x. So the notation f of x is read as f of x or the value of the function f at x. So synonymously, we normally see if we're given a function notation, they want you to graph it. f of x is the same thing as saying y, which like we also have a g of x which is the same thing as saying y equals m of x is the same thing as saying y equals if we're going to graph. Example three says, given the function defined by g of x equaling one half x minus one, find the function values. So they want us to find g of zero, g of four, g of negative three. So basically what they want us to do is use the zero, the four and the negative three to represent the x. So we're using substitution. So these represent the x, x variables. So we're going to take our equation, g of x equaling 1 half x minus 1, and we are substituting in for x. So we have g of x equaling 1 half times 0 is 0, minus 1. So g of 0, because that's what we substituted in, is negative 1. That is what we have to do. When we look at g of 4, same situation. Same equation, g of x equals 1 half x minus 1. We are plugging in a 4, so it's in parentheses. We get g of x, half of 4 is 2 minus 1. So when we plugged in a 4, it resulted in a 1 value. The last one is the negative 3. So we have g of x, again, equaling 1 half x minus 1. You're plugging in the equation. So it's 1 half of negative 3 minus 1. G of x equals negative 3 halves minus. Now, 
If I want to combine like terms, because different fractions, you're multiplying the top and bottom by 2. So we're seeing g of x equals negative 3 halves minus 2 over 2. So the denominators are the same. So g of x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So g of negative 3 resulted in negative 5 over 2. Now, if we were listing these as ordered pairs, since we found our values, you can do ordered pairs. Remember, the substituted into 0, so that's the 0. There's my x. It resulted in a y output. We inputted a 4. It resulted in a 1 output. We inputted a negative 3. It resulted in a negative 5 halves output. In example 4, this is a typical SAT or ACT question. Um, example 4 says consider the following function, and they want you to find h of negative 1, h of 2, h of 5, for what value of x is h of x equal to 3, and for what value of x is h of x equal to 0. So we're going to tackle with a first. a says find h of negative 1. So basically you're reading a graph, interpreting the graph. Remember, the number on the inside of the parentheses next inside for the function is your x. So you're going to go to the graph, and you're going to go to x at negative 1, and you're going to go up until you hit the graph. We hit the graph at y value of 2. So h of negative 1 is equal to a 2. On b, it wants us to find h of 2. Again, that is your x. So we're going to go to the x-axis at 2, and we went up and we have a 1. So the function at 2 is a 1 value. c, on the other hand, says h of 5. So when we go to our graph and we go to the 5, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go down, it's an open circle for the y value. Because there's an open circle for the y value, this is undefined. The minute there was an open circle, that's an undefined piece. D and E are different than A, B, and C. D and E, they gave us the function answer, and they want to know what x value gave us that function answer. So when you look at D, we want to know what's the Y, what is the X that produced Y equal to 3. So on the y, now we're looking at the Y axis as opposed to the X axis. Well, on the Y axis, we go to 3, and we go to the left. When we hit the graph, we have to go down. So we are negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So... At x equal to negative 4 resulted in a function answer of 3 for h of x. Same thing goes with e. It's saying, what is x that produced an x, a y value equal to 0, a y value equal to 0. So, Remember, y value means it didn't leave the number line. It didn't leave the x-axis. So we're looking at our graph. We went 1, 2, 3 to negative 3 at x. 1, 2, 3, 4 at x. So when x equals negative 3, x equals 4, our function of x, h of x equals 0. Example 5, it says write the domain in interval notation. So... When you're looking for domain in functions, domain, it's located in the denominator if you have a fraction. Inside radical, if you have a radical, as well. So when we look at the A, it says f of x equals x plus 7 divided by 2, x minus 1. We have a rational fraction. We are searching the denominator for our domain. What you're going to do is you're going to take the denominator, x minus 1, equal to 0, and solve for x. So we're adding 1. So 2x equals 1, divide by 2. So x equals 1 half. What does that mean? It means this is where it does not exist. Does not exist at that point. So when you're doing interval notation, remember on a number line, so if you have a number line, here's 0, here's my 1 half. It is open 
because it's broken there and you're going to the right and you're going to the left. So when you write interval notation, you're going from negative infinity to negative one half to positive actually one half, parentheses. That open circle is your union. It's a union piece because you have to do the other side, one half to positive infinity. On B, it says h of x equals x minus four over x squared plus nine. So when we see this denominator, because it's a plus sign, x squared plus nine, plug in a number. If I plug in negative one squared plus nine, I become one plus nine gives me 10. I plugged in a negative number, I got larger. I plug in a positive number, I am still larger. So I become negative infinity, Pause infinity. The only reason it happened is because it said x squared plus nine. If it had said x squared minus nine, then it would be a different situation. Which if we look at C, I changed C up. So here on A, B, we had x squared plus nine. On C, I did x squared minus nine. So on C, when we look at our denominator, we take x squared minus nine, set it equal to zero. You get x squared equals nine, and then take the square root of both sides. So x equals positive and negative three, which means there's two breaks. So the easiest way to do it is sketch on a number line first to figure out your intervals. Here's negative three, zero, and three. So it means that this is where I am open at those two pieces. So we are good to the left of it, in between them, and to the right of it. So there are two unions. We're a union here at that circle, open circle, and a second one right there. So we're going to the left from negative three to negative infinity. So from negative infinity to negative three, parentheses. But then we have a grouping between negative three and three. So we're gonna go from negative three to three. And then we have the numbers after three, from three to positive infinity. So we're gonna go from three to positive infinity. So when it's x squared minus nine, notice the exponent value was two and we ended up with three interval notations. So if you looked back at the first one we did, the exponent value of x is one and we ended up with two. So your intervals are gonna be one more than the exponent of the highest variable. So if the exponent had three, then we would have four groupings. If it was five, then you would have six intervals. On D, it says m of x equals the square root of x plus four. When you have a square root, only with radicals, you're gonna take the inside and make it greater than or equal to zero. You're always doing this. Always greater than or equal to zero. So we're gonna subtract the four x is greater than or equal to negative four. Now, arrow tip is going to the right. So if you do a number line, here's negative four. And we stated that it's a solid line because it's greater than or equal to, so I'm a solid dot going to the right. So for intervals, you're a bracket at negative four going to infinity. E, when we look at it, says g of t equals t squared plus, minus 3t. Notice that there is no, denom no denominator, no radical. It's just a regular polynomial. When you see some situation like this, t squared minus 3t, your interval is going to be negative infinity 